Hello everybody, welcome to the preview of round 13. Uh, we continue to be in the buy rounds with two teams having the buy this week, which is Port Adelaide and Fremantle. Uh, there's been one game already today, and it's the Tigers. Richmond Tigers getting their second win of the season, defeating Adelaide in Adelaide 79-71. to um, A couple of all right performances, no really big standouts, I suppose. Um, well, for those people that were selected, some people had some players that played well that weren't selected. Um, but the Tigers getting the second win of the season and heading to Dusty's 300th game next week against the Hawks with a little bit of confidence and be, have their tails up. That's for Adelaide. Well, sign, re sign Nick's at the start of the year because he's going to be your next premiership coach and you've know, only got four wins after 13 rounds. Hmm, struggling there. Regardless of which, we probably should have a start going for a preview of this week's games, and we'll start with the top of the table, Sugar Daddies. All right, and this is top of the table, Sugar Daddies, who are playing Maltese Falcons, so it's sixth versus first. Pre-match projections, Maltese Falcons, 341. However, obviously, as you can tell, the team hasn't been done. There's a few players missing. So probably more likely a 380, 390 projection um, against Sugar Daddies, who are projected for 394.3. I think Green, what's Green averaging? If you put Green in, he's averaging 53 is a mid. So add that in, add that in there. Um, 300, both teams are, project, are projected for 394 if Green is selected. Um Although Meek isn't and Kelly isn't as well. So, yeah, there we go. No, no one's done their teams. Well, no one's put their proper teams in. So, we'll go really briefly, go over everything in terms of what it looks like at the moment. Um, full forwards, Mackay and Hogan. Uh, half forwards, Warner back from his bye against Petrarca. So, Tracker plays Monday, obviously, in the in the King's birthday. Dacos also plays Monday. He's up against Walsh. So, both players have been getting over 100 the last couple of weeks as utilities. Meek is not playing, so Lloyd, uh, sorry, Ned Reeves or Cameron Briggs will have to come in as the ruck, uh, and they will be playing against each other. So Fenix got a decision to make. I'm not sure when he's going to Thailand, but maybe he can get the lady boy that will be giving him a massage to do his team for him. Um, and Sherry in the ruck. Kelly is not playing. He's injured again, so he won't be playing. Bailey Dale looks like he's loopholing tomorrow night, and Tom Green is loopholing Saturday afternoon. Or one o'clock, and then you got Crits and Noble. Interesting selection. Uh, Main Wanganeen, Crisp and Rao, two top players have been getting over 50 as tacklers the last couple of weeks. We've already discussed who the loophole players are. Um, as you can tell, there's a few players injured and with buys for both of these teams. Um, but other than that, Will Day can possibly come in for Tim Kelly or for John Noble, maybe because he's been in pretty good form lately. Um, and Looks like Setterfield's been selected as well. And yeah, no reason we need to come in for Lloyd Meek on that one. So we'll go to the next game. Second of the ladder, Punters Panic versus Renegades, who are seventh. Pre match projections is 354. However, it looks like Jordan Dawson in his 93 will come in. Um, so that's an extra 40 points there, 42 points there. 
so 396 projection against Renegade, so a pretty much projection of 381, and they will be loopholing Dunkley tomorrow night. Um, it's King of Langford. Langford hasn't been in that great of form lately. Um, Dacos and Toby Green. Um, Elliot's obviously injured, and Dawson looks like he's coming in against Merritt, playing on Monday. Gorn and the Conan. Um, so yeah, Gorn. I think he always plays pretty well on the on the on the um on the Monday Kings or Queen's birthday. Previously Queens, now Kings. Um, Chalor, who's been on fire, been getting well over. Look, that average in sixty is a great, great, great effort. And David Davis Uniac um has been pretty good lately as well. Sinclair and Martin. Um, I think a stat. Martin is the second worst for kicking the efficiency or second most clangers in the league. But our game doesn't matter for clangers. Um, Keen played tonight. So that's one play we're going to look at. Keen got 61 as a halfback. So he was a mid-season pickup and got 61 as a halfback. So fantastic effort there. And Blakey also against the Cats on Sunday. Uh, Atkins as a tackler has been pretty good lately and Caldwell as well. And as we said, Dawson got 93 as a utility and probably going to be coming to that position. Anyone else tonight? Uh, halfback, Bolter would have got 56 as a halfback. But nothing else really of note because everyone else, no one else played. So let's have a look at the next game. Um, it's Top Guns, who are currently ninth versus Second Destroyed, who are third. Top Guns have had a player play tonight. They've had a couple of players, or both play, both players loopholed someone tonight. Um, Top Guns had Rory Laird, Laird, who got 49 as a midfielder. And they loophole keys, which feels like it's just a waste, but I don't think he had any other options. And Nan Curvis was also loopholed. And he, as you see, got 86, but he is clearly going to be coming in as a ruck. Um, and camera's up against Gorn, so Lan Curvis will probably more than likely take the 47 as a ruck. The pre match projections there is 383, so if you include the 47 as a ruck, he'll get him to around 400. And Top Gun's pre match projection is 365. So at the moment, the uh, players that are on top of the ladder or in the higher position are expected to win. Um, Oliver's utility is interesting because he hasn't been that great lately, and I'm not sure where he is. Surely Vossi doesn't take Nanks 86 as utility and takes the 47 as a ruck. But Papley and McDonald, uh, Waterman, who is back, um, and Danaher, Anderson and Oliver, Ned Moyle and Cameron there, but with Nank, Laird and Flanders, Heaney and Duncan. Um, interesting, Heaney, I reckon Heaney might be... Probably hasn't been great lately. I reckon you need to keep Waterman as the full forward and put Heaney as the half forward. Um, but it's not my team. I, mean, I don't think you've got shorter options too. Duggan as a halfback because Luke Ryan's up the day off. And Ridley, who's averaging 66 in his two games he's played. Still after his 74 as a tackle last week. And William Drew. Um, other options? Well, tonight, by the way, uh, Sam Ryan or Sean Ryan. Or whatever, I don't even know what his name is. Samson Ryan, that's the one. Didn't do much, and yeah, I mean, Haywood has been a bit of form than Papley, and Lloyd, well, yeah, not too many options there for, for Dasher to choose from, whereas obviously Zach Fish has been in pretty good form, Lukosius as well, so a couple got, and Peter Ryan, so a couple got options there for Seeking Destroy, um, in, to, in that one there. So let's go to the next game. It's Gods of Olympus, who are currently 5th, versus Bombers Forever, who are currently 10th. I should go the current form. So Gods of Olympus has won 3 in a row. Bombers Forever lost 3, lost three in a row. Pre-match projections. Well, no interchange has been selected for Bombers Forever yet. But their pre-match projections are 351.5, and Gods of Olympus are 382.2. Um, they loopholed Bolton tonight and he's probably not going to get a game. Um, Dry Class got the buy, so he needs to come out of that team too. So Mokos has completely done his team. And Bombs Forever, you've got three players playing tomorrow night. Hugo Hagen, English and Libba. Maybe one of them should be a loophole player. Um, more than likely one of them should be a loophole player. The only other options will still go play. How Payne's Tom Stewart as well. 
So maybe you can loophole. Yeah. Had, had enough of Tom Stewart. Tom Stewart's been benched. But yeah, one of those players tomorrow night, maybe loophole, or even loophole McGovern, see he goes and bring Tom Stewart if he does have a good game Um, with that one. So it's Stringer and Hugo Hagen, Golden and Stengel, Marshall versus English. Uh, I thought Marshall would have had a bit of a HIA or a concussion issue, but obviously not. McInerney versus Goldie, who was laid out this week, but is obviously back in the team this week. Whitfield and Sheasel. Will Whitfield get tagged or worked on against the Hawks? Um, the follower probably be Carl Amon. I reckon Carl Amon will come in as the follower. Um, and then Sisley is the halfback. I'm a grad follower over here in McGovern. Then Yo and Libba as the tacklers. So with that one, the God's Olympus projected to win as well. So we go by the projections. It looks like um, the top five is not going to change because every team in the top five will win and extend their lead. And every team in the bottom five will lose. So it's actually the top five versus the bottom five this week. There may be more of a gap, a two-game gap between the five this week, it looks like, on according to projections. However, Maltese Falcons could possibly are projected the same as Sugar Daddies. Um, let's have a look at this one. It's Rangers Anonymous, who are currently eighth versus Gators Beaches, who are currently fourth. Rangers Anonymous have had four players tonight, three on the field, one loophole. Um, so they're on 106 so far. So their pre-match direction was 327. They're now projected for 344. And Taranto probably come in as utility, unless you take 53 for Neil and put Neil as utility. But they're averaging the same. So Taranto, Taranto 46. Nah, well, Robottom's already got four averaging 46 tackler, so you probably keep that as it is. So, well, you can either put him as a tackler and take the same average, put him in the midfield and take the same average, or take the 85 as utility and put one of those other guys' utility. So a bit of a decision to make there for Kenna. Um, even if he had the um, projection, puts him at 360. So projection for th uh, three, pre-match 327, current projection for 344, where Gaze Butchers are currently projected for 375.2. It's Cameron versus Kerno. Um, hopefully Kerno has a good game against the Bombers. And Jeremy Cameron versus... Dylan Moore, but that may change. Um, Caniglio and Bont, well, not Caniglio, Bont and Bobby Taranto as the utilities. Strawn played tonight, got 20, um, come off injured. He played just over half of the game before he got injured, so he had 20. Uh, I think he got like a, quite a few marks, some hit out, 30 hit outs and 7 marks or something, I think it was. What was it? He had 13 hit outs and Four marks and did he kick goal? Did he? Well, can't really go and kick the goal. So there you go, big strawny. So he got um twenty points as a ruck. So that's his average because he hasn't played a game. We played one game before. Baker was pretty good. Got had quite a few kicks, um and got forty nine points as a follower. And Vlostin was quite down. He was down twenty seven percent on his usual outtake and got th only got thirty seven as a halfback. We talked about Toronto already. Um, so my team, I'm a bit worried about Holmes. Uh, he might get tagged versus Sydney. Um, what's his name? Who's that guy again? Um, won't come from Melbourne. Jordan might go to, might go to Holmes because Holmes is their only midfielder at the moment. Um, Grundy's coming back from his bye. Newcomb's in there, but I am Blue Pollen Zorko tomorrow night. See how he goes. And Nash has been very disappointing. If Zorko has a good game, probably put Zorko in there and put Newcomb as the tackler. And Harris Andrews back from his bye. Oh, I did miss out tonight. Uh, missed out on Jordan, Jaden Short. Is that his name? Jaden Jordan? Whatever his name is. Um, he would have got 61 as a halfback, 58 as a mid, and 54 as a follower. He's done nothing all season, really. He's been, I mean, if you look at his averages, he's been pretty poor. So he had a massive game tonight. So I missed out on that there. Um, so that's all. That's um, the preview of all the games. So we'll have a quick look at the fixture. I always forget to close this. I always forget to close the side. The little menu to make the screen bigger. It doesn't matter. I'm sure Mick will tell me off about it later. 
So if we have a quick look at the sides, um, it's Thursday night, was already been played. Tomorrow night at Marvel is the Dogs versus the Lions. In Launceston, it's it's going to be cold, but it's not going to rain. It's the Hawks versus the Giants. And over in WA, it looks like it will rain for the Eagles and North game. It looks like it's going to rain at the moment. By the way, this is the forecast at the moment, but it looks like it's going to rain most of the day. It may stop around before the game, just before the game starts, but then start again during the game. And then Saturday is um, Saints and Suns. That's games at Marvel, doesn't matter. Now, it's going to rain three days leading up to the Sydney and Giants game. It's going to rain every single day, but on the Sunday, it looks like it's going to be clear, so it'll be interesting. Whereas in Melbourne on Sunday, uh, for the Essendon and Carlton game, it's going to rain all day, it looks like. But Monday for Collingwood and Melbourne, it should be clear. So that's your quick review, preview, and your quick forecast and games and game update for the round. Uh, thanks very much, everyone. Have a fantastic week. Good luck to everyone. And yeah, Godspeed. See you.